consider is stop hiring middle-aged white people. The two, we have 5,400, you know, too many white officers. Over the course of the last year, our Air Force has made great strides, reviewing and improving our diversity, right. inclusion policies and practices. Uh, good morning, General. General, do we have too many white officers in the Air Force? And uh... All right, so I was trying to get the bottom of Colonel Wu-Tan. Why we shouldn't hire white guys to be in the Air Force that are good pilots. The best pilots are white. No, 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 you can't hire them. So I was thinking, where is this coming from? Like, where would Mark, Colonel Wu-Tan, get the idea on video? It was okay to say, we shouldn't hire white pilots, white officers. What are you, out of your mind? Let's get to that. So, uh, the, only, the only really guidance I've put out there for them to consider is stop hiring middle-aged white people. Right, right, right. Especially dudes that are pilots. Because... Honestly, we all think alike too much. And if we're going to be preaching diversity and being inclusive, then for crying out loud, let's back it up with, a, you know, let's make the rhetoric meet the reality. Colonel Wu-Tan has got a storied career. 30 years, became the head of the Civil Air Patrol, then of his 30 years active duty. I'll leave some links to his stuff. He's not new to this game, but he's hearing what's pushed down. Because you heard him say, we don't need white men to do this job, bro. We need to fill diversity quotas. And I was thinking, where does a colonel get the balls to say this? Like, what would prompt you to think this is a good idea on video? On video. So then I looked to the new head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, confirmation hearings, do, dig a little deeper, stand by. I want the wisdom and knowledge to lead, participate in, and listen to necessary conversations on racism, diversity, and inclusion. As the commander of Pacific Air Forces, a senior leader in our Air Force, and an African-American. Many of you may be wondering what I'm thinking about the current events surrounding the tragic death of George Floyd. No, no one's thinking that. You're a general in the Air Force. Your job is not to get political. Now, this was a couple years ago, right? So I'm just digging around saying, okay, this is the new head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It's confirmation hearings, which you're gonna see is outstanding. We need to hire, fire, I mean, fire 5,400 white officers to meet a quota system that he's got. And you now, now it's all making sense, right? Where did Colonel Wutan get the bright idea of a smart to run his pie hole on a video on a Zoom call? Well, right here. Here you go, General Brown. Here's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about how full I am with emotion, not just for George Floyd, but the many African Americans that have suffered the same fate as George Floyd. Senator, what I really look at is the uh, quality of all the officers that we have, and 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 we look at the the aspect of everyone who's qualified. Now, this is from July 11th, 2023. He's in front of a Senate hearing, and they're like, hey, by the way, you put out this memo about quotas. You're going to ax 5,400 white officers. Doesn't make any sense, General. What do you, what's going on here? Uh, meets the qualifications, uh, is, is promoted. And what well, I, I would agree with you, but that, that, is, that answer is not consistent with your August 9th memo. No. In your August 9th memo, you said that you signed on to that there should be a reduction, essentially, of about 9% of the white officers, that's 5,400, we have 5,400, you know, too many white officers. Now, how could you say that, justify that in your head, unless you're being told from leadership? That is why he is the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the head of the Joint Chiefs, right? This memo, this is pushed from leadership above, executive office, right? I mean, who would put that in writing? Unless you're not worried about your career being terminated, nuked. And this is the real impact, I think, of this desire of the administration. I'm saddened to see this in this memo of this, of this obsession with sort of race-based politics being interjected into our military. How did you come up with the percentage of 67.5% of the officers should be white? And how did you come up with 13% should be black? And how did you come up with 10% should be Asian? And how did you come up with 1.5% should be American Indian and native Alaskan? Mm -hmm. How did you come up with 1% being native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander? And how did you come up with 15% of our officers should be Hispanic or Latino? Senator, that is based on the, uh, that memo is on application goals, not the So that's who's gonna get in and move up the ranks. So if you're a lieutenant colonel, you want colonel, guess what? You don't fit the bill. You're a white man. There's not enough Hispanic colonels. You're out. That's right there. ROTC slots? Nope. Academy slots? Nope. Absolutely not. That's how this works. And he's being obtuse on purpose. So make up of the force. And those, those numbers are based on uh, the demographics of the nation. 
Okay, well, all right. There's 10% of our country is Asian American. So is that is that the is that where you came up with it? Just a just a percentage of the population, uh, essentially. Because because right now, what kind of work is this from a flag officer, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, saying, "Well, I just took the demographics of the country, and we're going to make it that way." Not the best pilots, just the demographic pilots, the diversity hires, right? I mean, <laughs> and then this guy wonders why. If, I won't bore you with now it. the actual <laughs> percentage. I mean, this is this is where this is a ridiculous conversation. Over the course of the last year, our Air Force has made great strides. Interestingly enough, in that long Senate hearing, I'll leave links to all this. He doesn't want to reduce the entire Air Force down, just the officer ranks. So the rank and file, the they don't care. But the officers are going to get cut. White officers, you're done. You're out. And he did a diversity and inclusion talk before he's even considered for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hence, that's why he's considered. Reviewing and improving our diversity and inclusion policies and practices. And we will keep working to remove barriers, reduce biases, and to ensure equity for all Emory. I mean, this guy is just a diversity hire, diversity joint chiefs of staff pick, right? He's got a great career, but you see him move up to the head when he starts going, we're not at the Air Force Academy, we're going to cut out mother and father. That's gone. I was a Senate hearing. He's like, well, we should just have parents or caregivers. I'm like, what? And they don't even, no one understands this. And then you're going to say, well, we need to have 12% of the Air Force officers now be Asians. The guy's like, well, how'd you get the number? Well, it's just the number of the country. So it has to be the same. Well, when we drill down further, how about Haitians? What kind of Asians are we talking about? Pakistanis, Indians, or Chinese? I mean, where does this send this fucking guy? And he is the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff will dictate policy across the board. Hence why he got the job, because he's all about diversity, equity, inclusion, not readiness, not lethality. This is his whole point right here. Sad day, my friends.